I'm here at the backyard bike shop with my mate Nick, and um, yeah, <laughs> and we're here to do some roadside bodges or fixes. Because Josh rode back from China to Newcastle. Nick um, always jokes that I'm very lucky because I didn't really have any issues coming back, apart from a snap bolt on the um, front fork. But other than that, pretty much no issues, and I'm I'm very lucky usually on my adventures. But one day your legs gonna run out. And yeah, I don't so, even know. Do you even know how to pump a tire up? Let um, alone like fix your bike. <laughs> So I think I need to watch this video as well, but um, this is a video of what you can do if your bike goes wrong. Yard riding, <laughs> you can counter a troll on your ride. Right. You get a puncture. I'd always suggest if you've got a reaming tool, stick that in there first and just cleans out the hole and makes it slightly bigger actually, which will make it easier to plug. So that goes in, that comes out. Swap this around. One of the little worms. I find it useful to flatten it on one side, it makes it a bit easier to get it through. Like threading, thread through a needle. It's a bit tight. Get in there. When you've got a bit of it through, try and grab it with your nails on the other side if you can. If you stuck your teeth, hook it through. Plus halfway through. Now, top tip when you put it in, uh, try and put it forward into the wheel, not downwards, not sideways. If you go down, there's a risk of you puncturing your rim tray. If you go sideways, there's a risk of you puncturing the sidewall. Um, if you go forward, the ends of stick out will stick backwards, so while the wheel's rolling, uh, they're less likely to work themselves loose. So find your hole again in there. Now, with control, push it in until there's only a little bit sticking out. Spread them apart, hold it there, and then just straight out, pull that out. Those bits stay in there, you don't have to take them out, you can leave it in, reinflate your tire, and off you go. This is one of my favorite bits of like spare kit to carry while riding. It's a tubeless repair patch kit. You can use it with tubes as well actually, but this is just, if you cut your tire, um, that's a lifesaver, because it can get you back on the road. Uh, without this, you're stranded. So, imagine you're out riding, you hit a sharp rock or something, and you get a cut in your sidewall. No inner tube, no sealant, nothing is gonna save that. But, one of these can get you out of trouble. Pop the tire off the bead. Tire lever. Find where your cut is. It's over there. And then essentially try and clean the inside. Blue roll, tissue, grass, money, grass. I would suggest not using your clothes because you're not going to get the sealant out of it, but obviously if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere and you have to get home. This time of the year, leaves. Yeah, just clean out as much as you can on the inside. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but the cleaner the better around the cut. Okay. Hold it over. Now, use your fingers as well. If there's dried up sealant, just you rubbing your hand on it will actually get the sealant off from around it. Just keep rubbing it. Obviously, don't rush this because if you don't do this properly, you're not getting home. Just essentially apply it all the way around, as much as possible around there. Okay. Get your patch, and then Add some glue to that. Don't be shy with the glue. Ground the patch. And then neatly make sure you cover the whole cut. Like that. Hold it down. Be careful to not glue your fingers to the tire. You will get a bit of super glue on there. Pop it in. And then just 
hold it. If you've got some grass leaves, stick that in between your fingers so that can stick in there. Obviously, it's going to stay inside the tire, but that doesn't really matter. Leave that on there. And then wait a few seconds. Don't rush this. Uh, you're not in a hurry if this has happened because it's better just to do it properly. Okay, leave it for a bit. Come back in about a minute, just making sure this is properly dried. So roughly a minute's passed, we know it's on there, it's secure, it's not moving around, it's tight. Carefully pop your tire back onto the bead. And then, generally I would suggest not using CO2 on tubeless, especially for the sealant, but in this instance, you don't want to risk it, you just want to get it bedded on. Uh, you can try it with your hand pump, but sometimes it'll fail. Obviously, if it works, great, but if it doesn't, uh, I suggest remove your valve core. By removing it, you're going to get the maximum amount of air through the valve in the quickest amount possible. The design actually has uh, the valve caps have a core removal tool built into them, so they are quite good. Um, at this stage, you can try a hand pump, but if that fails, use CO2. By taking the core out, you'll get more air in. So even with your hand pump, you'll have more likely chance of success. Pump and then a cartridge. Generally speaking, obviously, practice at home. Whichever one you buy, because you get different ones, will have different ways of working. That's got a needle in there usually. It screws in. Do you want a glove for your hand? Until it thing? pierces the thing. Uh, if you've got a glove, great, use a glove. If you don't have a glove, improvise, adapt. Uh, I'm just for this video going to use the restrap boot kit, because that gets really cold. Um, so that's pierced. That goes over there. Carefully hold the tie in place and then hope for the best. Okay, so that has now seated the tire perfectly in the first go. Obviously, if we let this go, all the air is going to come out. So it's worth a bit of practice, but if you can do it, what I would do is pull the CO2 back and instantly use your finger to block the, the valve hole like this. So you lose as little pressure as possible. That gives you time to get your valve core ready slide it back and in there carefully thread it back in until it's tight and then see your tire pressure uh, on bigger volume tires you'll lose less air it wouldn't matter as much but if you want to get a bit more air in there should be some left in the co2 canister so i can just go back on and inflate it a bit more um, screw that back on don't forget your valve cap next to the road. Let's cut over there. Nice. On a tubeless tire, if you've had a cut like that and you've successfully patched it, ride it for a bit. If the cut still stays like that, there's no need to actually replace your tire. Um, that will hold for a really long time. As with the rest of the tips, these are worst case scenarios. You're stuck in the middle of nowhere and you have to get home. So, you've had an accident or something's happened, you've bent your rear mech hanger. You can see from behind your mech's completely skew um, and you just need it a little bit more straight so you can get home. Um, yeah, this is a tr hack you could do, but I'd obviously say if you can avoid doing it, don't do it. Take your rear mech off, it's usually a 5 mm Allen key. On camp bag it's a T25. That spins off. And then instead of bending on your mech and damaging that, if you've got a CO2, it's the same thread as a most rear mechs. And that will just thread in. Be careful. But that gives you something to have a bit of leverage on to bend on. Obviously, don't be hanging off with loads of power because you don't want to be damaging that inflates the CO2 But cartridge. you can bend it to get, it, get yeah. you home. Um, for safety's sake, I would say uh, it's a difficult one. I would feel more comfortable if you let all the air out of the CO2 first. So if you can use an empty one, that's safer. Um, but obviously that's... Bit of a bodge, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, I strongly recommend using an empty CO2 canister, so even if you have to waste one, don't be doing this because if you snap that head off, um, yeah, it's, it's not going to be good. No. This one isn't just one for uh, out in the wild, this is for at home as well. If you don't want to invest in one of these, um, a tie lever works really well.
better than a flat screwdriver, I would say. So imagine you're out riding, um, sorry, you've been traveling or your brake pads are too close together to get the disc rotor in. Let's get your tire over and slowly get it in there and wiggle them back. Make sure you try and do them evenly. There you go. Caps back, wheel can go back in. Make sure the tie lead is clean before you do it. You don't want any oil or dirt on there to get onto your brake pads. Or some multi-tools. Some multi-tools will have, well, very few multi-tools. Yours has got one, but very few multi-tools will have tire spreaders. Uh, sorry, pad spreaders in them. So this is a pad spreader. And this will um, do the same thing as a tire yes, lever. If you've got one of them. For the purpose of this video, we've just removed a gear cable, but imagine you're out on a bike ride and your gear cable is snapped for your rear mech. First thing that's gonna happen is your rear mech is gonna pop from whatever gear it was in straight down to the 11, or 10 tooth, or 30 tooth, depending on what gear ratios you're running. But essentially the most difficult gear on the rear derailleur. Now, if you live somewhere hilly or in a ride around, you might need an easier gear to get where you're going. Take the whole gear cable out, and hopefully if it hasn't snapped on the head, you'll have a piece like this at the end. Um, it might be longer, it might be shorter. If you've got something to cut it, you can cut it shorter. If not, still use it, and then just roll the rest of it up. So what you want to do is, put the cable through the rear mech, so that hooks on there, and then feed it through, the same as what you would do a normal gear cable. Slightly tighten it up. Now here's the trick. Pedal and get into the gear where you'd want to be. When you're there, hold it tight. This might take a bit of practice. Tighten that in. And now your bike will stay in that gear and you can get yourself home. Obviously any excess cable, if it's a long cable, just roll it up or tuck it away. Um, and that's you. It's a single speed bike, but it's an easier gear than the 11. If it was the head of the cable that snapped off, you can still do this by taking the cable through and just essentially try and tie a knot on the one end, um, or make a bunch and then pull it through. It'll be a bit harder, but essentially if you can just find a way to get this gap slightly smaller, um, it'll be an easier gear. Obviously if you had electronic gears, the cables can't snap, because SRAM doesn't have cables. So, obviously battery can die, but... So in a, in a race, I'd snapped my rear stay, there was like a stick that flicked up into the wheel. Yeah, cleaned out the rear stay, uh, jumped off my... The mechanic took a, like a thick Allen key and taped it to my rear stay to offer yeah, some sort of stability to the, to the wheel. So, yeah. Did you Got round. Yeah, got round. The, um, the... Because it was back, back in the day of rim brakes as well, so the rim brake was rubbing, lo rubbing alongside the wheel as well to again, add some, some support in there. But, yeah. Split links. So, you, you're out in the wild, you need to fit a split link, but you don't have split link pliers. Simple hack is, fit it in between the chain ring and the cassette, hold your rear brake, and pedal forward. That comes back in. If you, for some reason, need to take a split link off a bike, and you don't have split link pliers, we've covered how to put it on, this is a trick to get it out. Find your split link, and then take the next link, lift it up and bring it closer so that it obviously forms like a triangle, sticks out, and then you hit on that edge or something hard, and that pops out the split link. Um, I have to put a disclaimer in here. Do not reuse your split links unless it's a Connex chain or certain KMC chain. Shimano, Campag, and SRAM chains are not reusable split links. So the advice from them is fit a new split link every time you take it apart. So essentially you can hit it with anything, uh, preferably pick something hard. This isn't something I would do for home mechanics or take your chain off, this is purely for in an emergency. Okay. Tiny plug. Obviously that's the tiniest hole, so it's like, this is excessive, but tiny plug's really easy, because all you do is find the hole, is there and then it's not gonna work is it it's not a hole too small yeah, possibly <laughs> in and 
then pull it out. Spin it. The sealant will seal around it. And then if you've got a pair of scissors, just cut the excess off. You see, don't cut it all the way against the tire, just a little bit. Thank you. There you go. And when that's done, screw it out, flip it around. You've got another one. If you've got a bigger hole, that's a bigger one. And then another one. So Genius. It's expensive, but it's much easier because you don't have to thread it in. Uh, you don't struggle as much getting it into the hole because uh, it's sharper. Um, if you had to fit an inner tube in there, I'd suggest before you fit an inner tube, when worse comes to worse, pop the tie off the bead and just pull the dyno plug from the inside out because all of these bits will be in there. So if you put an inner tube in, it'll puncture. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a lifesaver. It's, I use it as my lazy tool because um, obviously normal plugging works, but that's just much quicker and easier. Um, so yeah. So I'm having a bit of a nightmare. I'm on a really bad road. It's just potholes everywhere. And either that or it's gravel with massive stones. I'm down to three bolts again. And I was just in Calai Plume. I was trying to get it, the bolt, one of the, the bolt that had broken, drilled out. And these guys were being very nice, They're trying to help. But they were, they were about to break the bike, so. I, I stopped them before they they could drill right into the fork. Um, so I'm just gonna have to continue get to Dushanbe, which is about 370 kilometers away, and there should be a bike shop there that I can hopefully get it out for good. Uh, it's just been really annoying. It's been a beautiful road, but it's not a good quality, and with the two front panniers not fun. I'd love to come back and do it on with just less kit and it'd be or a mountain bike <laughs> and you could fly along the, the horrible terrain. Oh, better keep on going.